Cambridge University has rescinded its invitation of a visiting fellowship to Dr. Jordan Peterson. Amazingly, Dr. Jordan Peterson was recently offered a visiting fellowship to Cambridge University in England. I'm rather surprised, if I'm honest, because this is the university that allows men to wear women's uniforms and women to wear men's uniforms. And it's also the home of one of their most famous professors, that nudie woman, Dr. Victoria Bateman, who I've talked about on this show before. Now, Jordan Peterson had planned to work with the Faculty of Divinity in Cambridge for a couple of months this coming autumn. Um, but I suppose it should come as no surprise that that offer was eventually rescinded. Um, Jordan Peterson is no longer allowed to go to this faculty and do the work that he was planning to do. A university spokeswoman told the BBC, We can confirm that Jordan Peterson requested a visiting fellowship and an initial offer has been rescinded after a further review. Cambridge is an inclusive environment and we expect all our staff and visitors to uphold our principles. There is no place here for anyone who cannot. So agree with the university's principles or you're out. Is that how universities work these days? I mean, I know it's a tired old argument and everyone's said it before, but universities really are meant to be a place of debate, discussion, uh, disagreeing over things and coming up with new ideas. That's the whole point of university. But of course, it doesn't really matter anymore because they're all more focused on pushing an ideology, an ideological cause rather than actually educating people and learning new things. Uh, a statement was also given to The Guardian by the Cambridge Student Union, and that was equally disturbing. This statement said, We are relieved to hear that Jordan Peterson's request for a visiting fellowship to Cambridge's Faculty of Divinity has been rescinded following further review. It is a political act to associate the university with an academic's work through offers which legitimise figures such as Peterson. His work and views are not representative of the student body and as such, we do not see his visit as a valuable contribution to the university, but one that works in opposition to the principles of the university. Figures such as Jordan Peterson, you know, academics who deal with evidence, science, historical information, you know, a man who's concerned more about facts and maybe proving things uh, with evidence than pushing an ideology. And let's, let's look at this quote. It's a political act to associate the university with an academic's work uh, through offers which legitimise figures such as Peterson. Peterson is legitimate. He's a doctor. <laughs> you know, he's an academic. He's got years and years of experience um, of talking about clinical psychology, all this stuff. He doesn't need to be legitimised. He already is legitimate. And the idea that a university can't legitimise a figure like him is insane. The whole point of a university is to promote things like this, promote different ideas, promote different people coming to the university and doing study. Uh, the idea that the university should be kicking him out because the students don't agree with him is just mind-boggling. But, you know, the ideologues are winning and reasonable, decent men like Peterson are being chucked out and brushed off as insane or even racist. It's madness. Peterson was even somehow held responsible for this horrific attack in Christchurch in New Zealand. It's incomprehensibly dishonest to lay the blame for that vile, inhuman act at the door of Peterson. But that's what's happening. In fact, his 12 Rules for Life book has now been banned in New Zealand. This book, by the way, has nothing to do uh, with Islam. It has nothing to do with far-right ideologies. It categorically does not incite or advocate violence. So why are they banning his book? Well, I think it's because they want to find a bogeyman that they can throw under the bus, you know, make him the evil guy and uh, take away all the responsibility from the politicians who have effectively neglected the white working class and radicalized far-right terrorists in the first place. Take away the blame from them and put it on the, you know, put it on uh, Jordan Peterson's doorstep and job done. They don't have to worry about it anymore. And if you dare support Peterson, well, you're going to go down too because recently actor Charlie Hunman said that he appreciates the self-help work of Jordan Peterson and even that somehow sparked outrage. Dr. Jordan Peterson's books have been banned in New Zealand as people try and pin the blame for the Christchurch shootings on him. He's also had a visiting fellowship at the University of Cambridge cancelled and rescinded after mean-spirited and ideologically driven students forced the university to give in. And anyone who even says that they appreciate the work of Jordan Peterson, well, you can bet that they're going to be driven out of town as well. 
Peterson is attacked by the far left for allegedly being a neo-Nazi, which is totally and utterly insane, and then the neo-Nazis attack Peterson for allegedly being some kind of left-wing extremist. This whole thing is topsy-bloody-turvy. I mean, I agree with Peterson or not over things like identity politics, but he's bringing something unique to the table. You can't deny that. He's an honest academic, a man of integrity, and someone who's willing to engage with ideologues who refuse to allow the truth into academic and political dialogue. He's doing a lot of good, and I don't care whether I agree with him on everything, because I don't. Peterson is everything that a good academic should be. If you like that and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe and press that little bell button to make sure you never miss another Rebel video ever again.